Uh, my name is Connor Lyons. I'm a second year mechanical engineering student at UVA. Uh, this is my co presenter, Jacqueline Chow. And I am a second year computer science student. Uh, and we are presenting a novel argument reality tool, visualization and structural concrete design. Um, so we believe that uh, we believe that teaching and engineering effectively requires the use of physical demonstrations in classrooms, but fortunately these are expensive, time consuming, uh, and difficult to implement. Um, and here are some uh, common examples of what professors might do to uh, alternatively demonstrate concepts and especially in civil engineering. Uh, on the left here, we have a film prop for professors to demonstrate concepts such as bending. Uh, these don't really generalize to more complicated examples. Um, and on the right here, we have a, just a 2D image. Uh, it's so kind of complicated to understand. Uh, it doesn't really provide much intuition on problems themselves. And so we want to develop an education tool to address these limitations that is inexpensive, interactive, effective, and easily accessible for all students. Um, we've designed a mobile application using augmented reality to address these limitations. So to explain more about what AR is, if you aren't already familiar, um, first imagine a spectrum of sensory experiences you might have through the mediation of technology. So on one end, we have complete reality, where everything we perceive, such as through the lens of a camera, uh, is being sourced directly from the real world in which we live. But on the other end, we might have virtual reality, where nearly everything we see and hear, and possibly even feel, smell, or taste, uh, has been computer generated. So AR lies somewhere in the middle of these two ends, where we have a mostly real world, where virtual content is being incorporated. And the Microsoft HoloLens 2 is an example of a technology which enables AR. So to expand more on how AR addresses the limitations previously discussed by Connor, um, AR can provide more realistic depictions of structural members and the phenomena occurring within them. Then they can do this through 3D visualization as well as real-time simulation. AR tools are also pretty intuitively interfaced. Normally they are controlled by simple bodily gestures such as pinching your fingers on a screen or tilting your head. Um, which facilitates better investigation of the concept being illustrated itself, rather than familiarizing yourself with the tool being used. Um, and since so many of us have personal mobile devices these days, um, which typically enable AR, this provides the student individual on-demand access to this learning resource. So here we have an outline of our project. So first, Connor and I begin by creating models and model result data in an FEA or finite element analysis enabled modeling software. And these results we port into our application, which is hosted on the student user's mobile device, either a tablet or a mobile phone. And it's on this device that they can interact with the virtualizations of the models and the model result data that we've ported in. So a topic we applied our application to was the analysis of concrete quality, which is primarily determined by a number of strength tests, which involve a number of specimen geometries and loading scenarios. So we loaded in similar loading scenarios and structures to help students understand the basic elements that compose, that compose these strength tests. And here we've just listed a couple of the standard concrete strength tests. Um, so here's an example that we've uh, demonstrated here. Uh, on the right, we have uh, this model uh, in SOLIDWORKS, which is the CAD FEA simulation software that we've used. Uh, this is just a concrete cylinder that's under compression. Uh, it's analogous to ASDM test C39. Um, so on the next slide here, we have it demonstrated in our application. You can see we have a number of models uh, in our app right now. Um, so we'll just select cylinder compression. Um, 
And then we have uh, options to select the submodel scenario, but this model but is none. Um, then we will select our force. Uh, and we will set the magnification to be 10. We we'll hit detect plane to place model. Sometimes the model gets placed a little bit off screen, but it's usually pretty easy to find. Um, can drag it around using touch controls. It's pretty easy to use. And then in that drop down menu in the top, uh, we can select UY, which is the Y displacement, and hit the play button in the bottom. And that causes the cylinder to deform. Uh, and right now it's showing the Y displacement again. Uh, can toggle on and off at Kelabel, which allows us to better view the actual values of the deformation. Uh, and here are a few other examples that we've demonstrated in our app. Um, on the left there, you can see we have a split tensile loading on a con concrete cylinder. Uh, on the middle there, we have a simply supported beam uh, for four point loading. Um, and on the right, we have a cantilever beam and that's showing the moment and CO diagrams um, in three dimensions. And I'll at least play a little bit just so you can see them all. All right, so with a previous iteration of our Struct AR application, um, we led an undergraduate laboratory section of an introductory structural design class. And the purpose of this was to have students install this app onto their personal device and to investigate how they responded to our application and how they kind of felt about using the application in an educational setting. And so we pulled a couple of the survey responses, which we thought were promising. So to the statement, I think Struct AR is easy to use. We have the majority of students answering either agree or strongly agree. And this is promising because we did intend, or we did have a goal as our app to be intuitive and easy to use, to have them focus more on the concept being illustrated, as opposed to learning how to use the tool itself. Um, and to the statement, I enjoyed using Struct AR. We had, again, the majority of students answering either agree or strongly agree. And as previously touched upon by Connor, um, traditional instructional methods sometimes lack that interactive element, um, which might hinder engagement. So uh, we appreciated the results for this response. And to this statement, I believe Struct AR would be helpful when learning. We had a number of students agree with this statement as well. And this is promising as well as we hope to ultimately bring this application into a class longer term and assess whether or not it would actually affect student learning outcomes. So we will continue to develop this project um, in a number of ways. And first is to improve user experience. Um, as Connor mentioned before, sometimes the visualizations can get a little wonky. So we'll be trying to improve that. Um, we would also like to expand this application to be more compatible with more devices, such as Android and the Microsoft HoloLens 2. Um, and the purpose of that would be to investigate how using AR dedicated hardware in the classroom would also impact uh, student learning outcomes. We'd also like to enable a two-way FDA data generation, as currently Connor and I create the models and the model result data. But we'd also like the users to be able to create their own custom model geometries or model simulations. So we would like to thank um, the Office of Undergraduate Research at UVA for sponsoring this research, as well as a host of research mentors who have guided us along our way. Um, thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be taking them now. Ooh. Thank you for that great presentation. Uh, teaching, learning is always a big, big thing, especially in this industry. So if we can help, you know, the young, especially uh, learn interactively, all about that. You know.